learn the houndstooth stitch pattern. This is a fair isle technique on a stocking net. We're going to be working with two colors today and show you this stitch repeat. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. The Fair Isle design is a two color or more stitch repeat where you make a pattern on the front and stock a net and you hold the yarn in the back and string it along until you need the next color. You don't cut your yarn, you just hold it. So I'm going to show you a technique where you can hold uh, the two colors and actually two different hands. Uh, you can still work with just one hand at a time if you need to. In fact, I do that on the pearl row still myself. Uh, so you're going to see two different techniques here. And uh, you can work this as a flat panel back and forth like this and we'll have a a uh, pattern down below that has a chart, but you can also work it in the round. Okay, so you just keep repeating. It's a four stitch repeat and a four row repeat. So uh, be sure and click down below to get that pattern. I also have a pattern for in the round as a Fair Isle hat, which is kind of a classic Fair Isle look, but it's also a four row repeat for round, and you can substitute this stitch pattern in that too. So be sure and click down below. Let me show you my chart and we'll work on this too together. On the third page of our pattern, you can see we have a couple of charts. We've got a small houndstooth chart, which we're going to work on today. And then we also have a large houndstooth chart. You can choose to use either one. This is for your convenience if you're working with a smaller yarn and needle, or if you just want to make what we're doing today much bigger. So uh, the small houndstooth is we'll concentrate on today. If you're not familiar with patterns, you're always going to be starting on the bottom right on row one, and that's going to be your right side row. You're going to work all the way across and then when you get to your wrong side row it's going to be a purl and you're going to walk across from left to right in that direction. So you can see contrast A is where we're going to start and we just have one and then you're going to make one of B and then you're going to uh, repeat your A. Well when you're repeating this over four stitches this will actually end up looking like three because this uh, one repeats again. So you'll have three of one color and one of the opposite color and that's on every row. So then when you go up to row two, you're going to work three of your contrast color B and then you'll do one of A. Three, row three is uh, knitting again on the right side and you're still going to do what you just did on two um, in the same color. So you're going to uh, knit this time. So you're going to knit three in B and then one of A. So you have two rows that start with the same contrast and then you have row four that starts with one of A just like row one did but we're working in the opposite direction from left to right in pearls. So we're going to do one of A one of B and then we'll repeat with the three. So that's how that chart works. Let's jump on over and you're going to want to cast on. I'm going to look at my sample and show you uh, what you want to do first. We're going to cast on our sample with 20 stitches and I'm using a US 11 or 8 millimeter needle and a super bulky six weight yarn. If you want to use whatever needle you're comfortable with and yarn, just make sure the yarn is appropriate to the needle. Uh, this sample is about five and a half inches wide by six inches tall. We're going to do um, five pattern repeats or you can do five pattern repeats and let's just go over the basic format of this. You're going to cast on 20 stitches. You're going to have a foundation row of purl going back and then we're going to work on just this four row repeat and then when you're done I suggest that you make one row of uh, knit stitches after that and then you can bind off your sample to have okay so that's how you get that so go ahead and cast on 20 stitches and make one row of purl and I'll meet you back to work on the four row repeat see you soon all right, so you've done your 20 stitches of cast on and your first purl row. Of course, I did assume you knew how to cast on and knit and purl and, of course, bind off for this sample today. But if you need a refresher, please go click down in the link below for our slower tutorials. Uh, we go very slow for beginners, so if you are a beginner, you can do this. However, this next part, I am going to be holding things with two hands. And um, I want you to know that uh, I'm going to go slow. You can do it with your own technique and learn how to trap it in. But this is a very particular one that um, makes it easier on you. So go ahead and work the very first stitch in color A, just as normal. And then you can drop A for now and pick up B. Okay, I'm working my A is orange and B is white. So just knit this first one as normal. 
Okay, leave a tail and go ahead and tighten those up. Okay, so our next stitch we want to uh, knit with A as well. So go ahead and work that one. All right, now we're on our last and fourth stitch uh, of the stitch pattern repeat, and this is one that allows us to trap in uh, this color here, our contrast B, all right? So I'm going to uh, go into that stitch as if to knit and pick up my contrast B in my other hand. So just pick that right on up, and we're gonna be working with both of these, okay? So uh, let's see, I'm in this stitch here, and when I go in, I'll just dip my needle right underneath what's in this other hand, and uh, this is my contrast B. So we're going underneath B, and then go ahead and knit with A, just as normal. And when you offload that needle, when you come through, what happens is it sweeps underneath that contrast B, and it ignores it, but it puts it on top of this stitch in the back here. And then just let it go like before. And then now when we knit the next stitch, which is in our four row repeat, when we're going on to the next one, or four stitch repeat, it's gonna be an A again. When we knit this one, it traps it in. So you're ignoring B here. It's going right on top of it and knit. And you can see that B is trapped in the back. There's no really long lines here. There's no floats. And so now you can work uh, your next uh, stitch as well. So we've got um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and that means that we're ready to go on to contrast B because you can see every fourth stitch here. So we've got one, two, three, and A, and we need the fourth one is B. So we're going to uh, pick up B, and the way to knit that one is you're going to uh, keep your needle on top like this, but we're going to wrap around. So you're coming from the side um, where your um, your work is, uh, your main work on your, uh, this needle, I'm trying to not use left and right terms, but you're coming from uh, this side of the needle over here, go around up top and down towards the front of the needle. So from uh, this direction, go around towards the, the point of this needle here, and then pull it on through, and now you have B. And then you're going to knit, A is normal, and now we're gonna trap it in. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna go down underneath that yarn or you can flick it around like that. I end up doing that when I'm doing it faster. And then now knit that stitch with A and do one more to lock it in with A and you're back to B and you're gonna knit with B. So you're gonna go in that stitch. We're gonna go around and through. Okay, you're just going to keep that stitch pattern going until you reach the end and you'll actually end with uh, two of color A. So uh, it, what if you're not working with uh, two hands? Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to uh, trap in this B, just knitting as usual. And then if I have A and I want to get that trapped in, I would need to um, lift it up. And uh, after we put it on top here, we're just going to Go over this direction and then pull through and it traps it in the same as well. So if you really don't want to hold it with this other hand, that's what you can do. Okay? All right. Pause your video and I'll see you on the next row. Okay. I'm at the end of row one. I just want to show you the last couple of stitches. Just go ahead and work that second to last one as normal and then the very last stitch go ahead and uh, tuck in like you're preparing to continue the pattern on go underneath there go ahead and knit and let that fall off and it sets that color up in the back in the right position for our next part so we're going to be uh, purling all of these our next stitch is going to be uh, white so you see that we had three of the orange which is color a and we have uh, color B, the cream color, tucked in behind, okay? It just looks like a little pearl stitch here, okay? So we're gonna be doing that over this way, and we're gonna be uh, doing more of an English style we're throwing here. Uh, go underneath, and we're going to purl that first stitch, and we wanna make the white stitch go. So we're gonna put the orange on top, and so we've got B coming from below, purl that stitch, and it sets the yarn up in the right spot. Okay, 
and then now we want to purl with B as well. Um, we want to make sure that we go underneath the orange. Put A on top and grab B and go ahead and purl with B once. All right. So we're going to work this third stitch and we want to make sure that A uh, goes around like a little scarf. So we just um, move this one over just like that and then put A on top. So A is going to come around on top of it over here. Okay. So it's under it and then we're going to go back over this direction and purl and then there's your little scarf okay so now we're going to come over here and we're going to pick up uh, A and we're going to purl and so that is our pattern okay we'll do it again I'm going to start repeating and just pick up B and purl and then we want to do B again but we're going to uh, make sure that the um, A is on top and go ahead and purl and then come to the third one make sure B is on top again so you're going under twice on that and then you're ready for uh, A again I hope I didn't say those wrong numbers but you can see what I'm doing if I said that wrong then I'm so sorry Okay, so we've got it all set up again to repeat, so you're just going to continue uh, working. Again, here we're going B, and that's on top, B's on top, and then we're going to do um, B under, and knit with B, and then B under, and you twist it around, and knit with B. And then I'm saying knit, I mean purl. <laughs> I just mean work the stitch. And then go ahead and purl. Um, oops. And then go ahead and work your purl in A. Okay? So I may have said some of those names wrong, but you can see what's happening on the screen where I'm making uh, three of one color and one of the other in the purl. Because when you work your row four, it's going to be like this again, just the opposite colors. So go ahead and complete that row, uh, pause your video, and I will meet you back up for row three. See you soon. We are ready to begin row three, and we're going to start with the same colors that we started our row two when we were going the other direction with. So we're going to start with uh, three whites, which is B. So go ahead and work those three. So you're going to hold your um, uh, A yarn in your other hand and your B in your primary hand here. We're going to knit that first stitch, and the next one we're going to... Uh, tuck that in and knit that and then knit the next stitch to trap that in and then go ahead and knit the color A. So three knits of white or your color B and one of A and then repeat that. So continue that uh, and I will meet you back for row four. We'll see you soon. We're at the end of row three, ready for four. Just want you to see what that looks like so far. And I'm gonna turn this over and we'll start working with color A again. And we're gonna have more of color A on this row. So this is the same similar starting colors or the same starting colors as row one. You're just purling them. So uh, it's already on that color. Uh, you can go ahead and twist around and get that uh, white color trapped in, so the one you're not actually using, and then grab so essentially you're grabbing A from below and go ahead and purl that one. And now we're going to work with uh, B and purl one. All right. And then now we're going to work with uh, three colors of A. So grab A, it can be on top. Okay. And the next one we're going to purl again and we want a on top, go ahead and make sure it's coming from below and purl. And then the third one, go ahead and make sure B's on top. So 
A's on bottom and pearl. And you've got that all set up and trapped in. And now you can grab B again and pearl. Okay, I may have said some of those names. I, I, keep, I keep wanting to say the colors and not the names and get myself confused, but you can see what I did. So we've got um, one of A, one of B, three of A, and then one of B, and um, we're gonna continue on um, with those uh, stitches as before, where you grab A and pearl, and make sure uh, B is underneath. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, A is underneath, so put that B on top, and purl, and that finishes out those eight stitches. So you're going to keep repeating till the end of that row, and uh, I'll show you what mine looks like with the four row repeat after this. See you in a moment. So here's my work. Let's pull it down here, and you can see this four row repeat. See what that looks like. You'll really start to see the pattern emerge after you have a couple of these done. Um, so at least two to three of these row repeats uh, to really see the houndstooth emerge. So this sample here for my swatch, I just repeated it four more times. So there's a, there's a total of five here. One, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to knit one more row in your main color or color A and then bind off all stitches. And there is your sample. And of course it is a stockinette. It is gonna roll unless you have a border on it or you can use it in the round. Um, and feel free to play around and have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed learning about the houndstooth design. Be sure and click below to get that hat pattern to make Fair Isle hat. And you can substitute this pattern instead of the standard fan Fair Isle hat that we have listed. Also, if you need any more tutorials on needle knitting, we've got a playlist for you here on your end screen. So be sure and stay tuned and subscribe for more videos. Next week, I'm gonna show how to make this on the knitting loom. We'll see you soon. Happy knitting. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.